there, it's Mrs. Trombley again, I know. And it's time for lesson six, five. And I broke this one up into two parts. The first part we're gonna talk about is exponential growth. And then 6.5 part two, we'll talk about compound interest. They go, do go together, but it seemed like too much for just one. All right, so exponential growth. That happens when a quantity increases by the same factor over equal intervals of time. When B in Y equals AB to the X is greater than one, then it's an example of exponential growth. So when you get an amount B, when your growth factor is greater than one, that's an example of exponential growth. As B increases, the curve of the graph gets steeper and steeper. I'm sure you remember that from your calculator lab. Sometimes the growth factor is a percent. So that's how this is a little different than the 6-4 notes. You're gonna be given the growth factor as a percent. When the growth factor is a percent, you're gonna change it to a decimal by dividing it by 100 because that's how you change percents to decimals, right? Then we're gonna add a one to it and the result is B. So you might be thinking, well, I thought I just had to look for the multiplier. Why is this all switching up? I think this sales tax example really helps, helps it I don't, become clear. So let's say you're gonna buy a new coat. This new coat's $80. And you need to know, okay, how much money do I need because I have to pay sales tax? What do you do? Well, I know a lot of you would say, okay, well, I need to know what 6% of 80 is. So you take the 6%, you change it to a decimal by dividing it by 100, and you would take 80 times 0 0.06. And when you do that, you get $4.80, okay? So right there, that says, that's this part. When the growth factor is a percent, change it to a decimal by dividing it by 100. But then I tell you, add a one to it. Now I don't want you just memorizing rules. I want you to know why you're doing what you're doing. If I would have changed this to 1.06, right? Because right now, didn't I just get the sales tax? And I still have to take that plus the 80 to get 84.80. There's an extra step there. If you just take 80 and you multiply that by this 6% as a decimal plus 1, type that in and see what you got. When you take 80 times 1.06, you go immediately to the 84.80. So just multiplying it by the 6% doesn't give you the total. It only gives you what you add to what you started with. When we're searching for Y, we're looking for the total. So you have to add the 1 so that in, it includes the 80. Because isn't 80 times 1 80? And 80 times 6 hundredths is 480? Doing that naturally puts them together. So that's why you're changing the percent to a decimal and adding a 1 to it. So you can go immediately from one value to the next without that step in between. I hope that makes sense. All right. So take a look, a function in the form of, now this isn't really anything different. This is still just like y equals, there's my a, but this amount right here is like my b. And there's the one plus my rate of growth in decimal form that we just had talked about. So that's your b. t is used for time, doesn't x represent time? So this is really just like y equals a times the quantity of b to the x. Don't let too much throw you off. Okay, it's just this time you have to mess with the B a little bit more. So in this form, A is greater than zero, R is greater than zero. This is exponential growth. So let's try some. I think we've already kind of identified all of these things for you. Oh, the arrow should be pointing like that. Hopefully I'll have that fixed on yours. A is still the initial amount. The rate of growth is the R in this, but you're gonna make it a decimal. T is the time and this whole amount is your growth factor. Okay, so the function y equals 150,000 times the quantity of 1.1 to the t power represents the attendance y at a music festival t years ago, or sorry, t years after 2010. Let me scooch this up a little bit. There we go. So first off, you're given an equation. I'm going to kind of box that and you're given a date, so those are probably pretty important. Letter A asks you, by what percent does the festival attendance increase each year? Okay, so let's think about this for a moment. How on earth
earth am I supposed to figure that out? What do you think? I wish I could talk to you right now. Talk to your computer and just pretend that I'm there. How do you think I could figure out the increase each year? I'm going to help you out by looking up here. Right here, 1.06 would be that amount, would be my growth factor, right? So when you see this one, that's the one that I added. So if I'm trying to figure out what the percent is, because that's actually what I'm asking you, what I want to do is I want to change this decimal back into a percent. So in order to change a percent into a decimal, we divide it by 100. In order to change the decimal back into a percent, we have to multiply it by 100. So in looking at this, if I'm trying to figure out what percent, that means I have to look at this 1.1 right here, don't I? You ignore the one that's in front of it because that's the one that you added. So I'm going to write 1.1 .1 and I'm going to take that one away. So you're left with the 1 tenth. Then I'm going to change that back into a percent by multiplying it by 100. And when you take 1 tenth and multiply it by 100, yes, you get 10. But now we multiply it by 100, which makes it a percent. So if I ask you by what percent, you're looking at this B value. You take away the one that you add. It's like you're undoing what you did to make it what it is. So you're taking away the 1 because you had added a 1, and then you're multiplying by 100 because you divided by 100. Okay, letter B asks you how many people will attend in 2014. Okay, so we started off in 2010, right? If I want to know how many people will attend, and you're given an amount of time, it means I'm searching for Y. I'm going to use the equation that's given to figure this out. But I have to figure out what to plug in for T. I'm not, I'm going to give you a hint, I'm not going to plug in 2014, okay? My starting point with this one, 2010 is my starting point, right? How many years later is 2014? Yeah, four. I'm going to have you make a little note of how you got that four. I know that you know that 2014 minus 2010 is four, but I want you to know where that four came from. So this is four years later. That's what I'm going to plug in for the time. So do that. Type in 150,000 times 1.1 to the fourth power and see what you get. We got a lot of people. You should have 2,000, or sorry, 219,615. And just FYI, if you have to round, or if you're dealing with people, you do have to round. You're not going to have like a tenth of a person. So when you did this originally, hang on, I'm going to get this up on the screen for you. You took 150,000 times 1.1 to the fourth power, and it came out exact, right? Let's say it would have gotten like 0.1 or something. You're going to round to the nearest person. So make sure your answers make sense. All right, turn the page. Try a few more of these. We've got three examples total, and by that time, I think we should be pretty good. Okay, so the function y equals 40,000 times 1.05 to the t power represents the population of a town t years after 2010. So we're back to 2010 again. By what percent does the population increase each year? So this is the one I'm looking for the percent. This is where I need this 1.05 to help me out. So I'm going to start with that 1.05 or 1 in 500, so I prefer to say. I want to take that 1 away that I added. This is what's left. And then to change that decimal back into the percent, we're going to multiply by 100. So yep, you should have now 5%. So that's how you figure out the percent growth. Now I ask you, what will the population be in 2017? Round to the nearest person, yes, of course. I'm going to use my original equation, so I have 40,000 times 1 in 500 to the, okay, I want to know 2017, we started 2010, so how many years later is that? Yep, it's 7. Alright, so type that in, I'll type it in too, so I know I'm giving you enough time to actually work through it, and when you do that, this time yes, you do get a decimal, it looks something like that. 
All right, so I'm not going to write that because that's not a portion of a person. I'm going to round this to the nearest whole number. So the number next to the 4 is 0. That means I'm going to stop right there. So I'm going to write 56,284 people. And I'm going to use my little squiggly equal sign to represent just about equal to. And that's one done. All right, the last one, the grand finale. There's four parts to this one, A, B, C, D. I know, we're learning the alphabet and math. So exciting. Anyway, sorry, that was bad. In 1980, the population of San Diego, California was about 875,538. Since 1980, the population has increased by 2.4% each year. So in all the rest of them, I gave you an equation to use. This one, I did not give you the equation. You know what that means? You're going to have to write it. That's what letter A says. Write a function for this relationship. All right. So this function is going to be in this form right here. And I'll kind of walk you through it. Okay. I know it's y. y equals. Now I'm looking for my a. a is the initial value. So this my starting point is in 1980. This 875,538, that's my a. So we're going to write 875,538 to get the b. Step by step, what we did on the front side of this, to figure out the B, your step one is to change the percent to a decimal by dividing it by 100. So you're given 2.4%. You're going to divide that by 100. I'm going to write it down here. So 2.4 divided by 100. And when you do that, you get 0 0.024. And then, remember, I need to include the initial population, so I have to add 1 to that. So that means my B, in this case, should be 1 and 24 thousandths. And X is going to stay a variable because I'm just trying to write the rule. So hopefully that all made sense. The initial value, to figure out what B is, you need to change that percent to a decimal by dividing it by 100, and then you add a 1 to it so that we get that whole amount. We get the population and the increase of it. Letter B says, what will the population be in 1985? Okay, remember we started in 1980, right? So that means this is five years later. If you start in 1980 and you go to 1985, this is five years later. So that means T is going to equal 5. So I just want you to evaluate the rule that you wrote when T is equal to 5. So you would type in 875,538 times the quantity of 1 and 24 thousandths to the fifth power. Go ahead and do that. And I'll do it too, again, just to make sure I'm giving you enough time. You should practice typing these things in your calculator. Otherwise, when it comes time to it, you might not know how. And it's kind of important. All right, when you type it in, I'm guessing you got a decimal because so did I. We're talking about people though, right? So when you see this decimal, I want to round it to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to look at the tens place here. The number next to the 8 is 4 or less. So that means I'm going to, to leave the 8 alone. So you end up with 985,768. And that's people. Alright. Now letter C asks you, what will the population be in 2010? So this is where it's real life application. It could be your job to make predictions. This is making predictions based on data, and population is usually one of those exponential growth things. So if I'm asking you what the population will be in 2010, you're going to use your original equation that you came up with, 875,538 times the quantity of 1 in 24,000, and you have to figure out what, time, what the time is. Figure out what time it is. All you have to do is ask yourself, if I start in 1980, how many years later is 2010? So, 2010, from 1980 to 2010, 1980 to 2000 is 20 plus another 10, that's 30, right? So you're going to use 30 for the time. Plug that in. When you plug that in, and again, I'm going to do it again because I, it's important that you do it too. Type it all in there, raise it to the 30th power. And you're going to get another decimal. And again, with this decimal, the number next to the whole number is 4 or less, so I'm going to leave it alone. So you get a lot. This is a big number. 
we get 1,783,502 people. Right? About. Because we rounded. Okay, then I ask you kind of a tricky one. I ask you, in what year would the population reach 1,250,000? Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, but quite honestly, I think your calculator is going to be the best way to do this one. Okay. Remember, you can type in any function, right? So get your calculator, go to y equal, get rid of any old ones you have in there, and you're going to type in your little parent equation here. Type this in using y and x's letters. So type in 875,538 times the quantity of 1.024 to the x power. Okay. Now, I'm not going to use the graph feature. I'm going to use the table feature right now. So go to your table. And I asked you in which year the population would reach. 1,250,000. X represents the years, right? The years since 1980. So right here, this zero, that represents 1980. So we're going to figure out how many years later Y is 1,250,000. So scroll down until you see 1,250,000. Now you see this exponential notation. This says E6. That means I'd move the decimal point over six places. So we're, we're in the millions now. I want it to be 1.25. So we're looking for 1.25. Ooh, I see it. Do you see it? 1.25 E6 means I'm moving that decimal point over six places. And it says that X is 15. So I get that X is 15. Right, X equals 15. Or T equals 15. Whichever. They're kind of the same. And now ask yourself, okay... This isn't year 15, right? This means 15 years since 1980. So you have to take your starting point plus the 15 years. So in 1995, that was when the population was about that. I know, a lot. Whew, but you're done. I'll see you tomorrow.